Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I am Greg Poling. I direct the Southeast Asia program, uh, as well as the Asia Maritime Transparency Initiative here at CSIS. We're very, very happy to see you all here for the next installment of our ASEAN Leadership Forum. We've been doing about one of these a quarter with senior leaders from across the region. Uh, I know that we're starting a few minutes late, but it is a rainy day in Washington, and I wanted to make sure everybody had a little bit of time to dry off and get to your seats. So, uh, First, a bit of housekeeping. Everything that you hear today will be on the record. We'll be live streaming it uh, on our website and on YouTube. Those who are online, we invite you to ask questions along with those in the room. Uh, and everything uh, today is being made possible by general support to the CSIS Southeast Asia program. So with that, let me introduce our guest of honor, uh, one who I'm sure is familiar to most of you. Asun Chantol is currently the Deputy Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia. He was previously the Minister of Commerce the last time he spoke here at CSIS uh, in 2014. Uh, he was also the Minister of Public Works and Transport from 2004 to 2008 and from 2016 to 2023. Uh, prior to joining government, he worked in the private sector, including 16 years at General Electric. Most importantly, we share an alma mater. He graduated with his bachelor's from American University and then went to a slightly better school, a little place called Harvard in Boston. I got my MA from American. I shouldn't say better because I see Piper Campbell there. An equally good school with American University. And so with that, let me cede the podium to uh, His Excellency Sun Chantol and then we will have our Q&A. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Well, it's great to, to be back, great uh, to see SIS. <clears throat> Appreciate very much the opportunity to be here to uh, uh, speak to you, uh, the, uh, the audience here, uh, and also on the online uh, you know, broadcast. Uh, we are here uh, to promote investment from the US and also Canada to Cambodia. We believe in the private sector. With our government believe that the private sector is the engine of our economic growth and our role is to facilitate the private sector to invest, to trade, to create jobs for our people. And you might ask, you know, why should we select Cambodia as a place to invest where we have alternatives, you know, bigger market, for example, in Vietnam, or to go to Thailand, go to Malaysia, go to Singapore, whatnot, right? But why Cambodia? And I can tell you, oh, I'm the, I always inform potential investor to come to Cambodia to invest in a country not to serve the 17 million consumer in Cambodia, but because Cambodia is strategically located in the heart of the Great Mekong Subregion, which consists of Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, Laos, Myanmar, and southern part of China with 250 million consumers. In addition to that, we are also part of ASEAN. So if you include all the ASEAN, we talk about 670 million consumers, the fourth largest economy in the world. But we, if you include, expand further to include Japan, Korea, China, New Zealand, and Australia, which form part of the largest free trade agreement called ASEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. That's the largest FTA in the world with 2.3 billion consumers. But let's expand further from Cambodia, the market in EU, European Union, few hundred million consumer there. And why we said you're the EU? Cambodia received trade preferences from EU. They grant us what they call EBA. Everything but arms. Anything that you manufacture in Cambodia other than arms, you can export to EU without paying tax. So that the advantage that investor We'll help by putting factory in Cambodia. Let's expand to USA. Cambodia also received GSP from the US, although the GS pro GSP program has expired, but we hope that the new Congress will renew the GSP. So the market 
is big. I mean, the world market actually can be served from Cambodia. But how about political situation in Cambodia? That's important. Predictability for investors is, is important. While well, we provide peace and stable political situation in a country. Since 1998, former Prime Minister, in 1998, former Prime Minister Hun Sen introduced the win-win strategy to allow the Khmer Rouge to lay down their arms and integrate it to the government of Cambodia. So 1998 was the first time in over 500 years that Cambodia achieved total peace and stability in the country. Before, you always have pocket resistance within Cambodia. But since 1998, we've been having total peace, one government, one constitution, <clears throat> one king. With peace and stability, we have been growing our economy at a seven, at average 7% per annum. That our GDP growth for 20 years straight until the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, when our economy shrunk. But last year, it grew on 5%. Uh, this year, the latest estimate from ADB, Asian Development Bank, is 58 And next year, going to be probably 6%. That the latest uh, estimate from uh, the World Bank. So we provide pain stability, and we provide macroeconomic stability in a country. The exchange rate of Kimura has been stable for the last 20 years, around 4,000 real to one US dollars. The inflation is stable, around 2.5%. Uh, so it's, you know, it's stable to do business. You don't want to go do business in a country where inflation goes like yo-yo, exchange rate like yo-yo. It's very hard to predict and to do business. And by the way, Cambodia's economy is dollarized economy. It's all US dollars based. So there's no exchange risk uh, for the American company to invest in a country. You also want to look at debt to GDP ratio. Our debt to GDP ratio is below 40%, around 30% plus. So Cambodia has the ability, has the room to borrow more, to invest in productive projects that will generate economic growth for our country. We have not borrowed for consumption, and we will not borrow for consumption, borrow to invest in productive projects. Talk about the government. Well, I like to go to Cambodia, but is your government pro-business government, or your government will be uh, uh, a manager of the private sector in your world? But our government is a pro-business government. Like I said early on, that we believe that private sector is the engine of our economic growth, so we work closely with the private sector. We have dialogue on a regular basis. The government of Cambodia created 16 technical working group co-chaired by the private sector and the minister of the government of Cambodia. For example, technical working group on banking, on taxation, technical working group on infrastructure, agriculture, tourism, and so on and so forth. And they meet on a regular basis to address the issues of the private sector in that particular uh, field. Once a year, our Prime Minister Chair, what we call Government Private Sector Forum, where we invite a thousand plus people in the room, in the room, private sector, diplomatic corps, NGO, and the whole cabinet member, we call expanded cabinet member, uh, expanded cabinet meeting, televised live on our TV, where the private sector can ask questions to the Prime Minister that this issue that cannot be resolved. So please help us to resolve these issues. IFC of the World Bank helped create 22 government private sector forums around the world. And they did a survey, which forum that is the most effective, productive in solving the problem of the private sector. Kimura came first. It's the most productive government private sector forum to solve the problem of the private sector. In addition to that, we offer the dialogue, public private sector dialogue with the US, Cambodia, US, 
public-private sector dialogue before I came here. That was the first time that we organized that with American Chamber of Commerce, co-chaired by Charges d'Affaires. In Cambodia, we have not had the new ambassador yet, so Charges d'Affaires co-chaired the uh, dialogue I, uh, with me. And during the meeting, we solved two problems, you know, two issues that the private sector from the American uh, community uh, raised, and we solved those two issues, and we noted we noted the issues that I need to address with other relevant uh, uh, ministry and agencies. We offer the same dialogue to uh, EU. So I co-chair the public-private sector dialogue with the ambassador of EU. That, that the first one, we started also the, uh, last weeks before I came here. We offer to Japan, we've been doing it with Japan 28 times. So once every six months, we co-chair with the ambassador of Japan and with JBAC, Japanese Business uh, Association in Cambodia. So this, the avenue, the platform where the private sector can air, can, ish, can list out the issues. If I can resolve with my colleague from various government agency, ministry, I will bring this up to the prime minister and he will set up the troubleshooting task force, if you will, to address, address uh, those uh, cross-cutting uh, uh, issues. So that's why I'm talking about pro-business uh, government, okay? Now, we are great, we are happy, you have a uh, micro responsibility. you have uh, pro-government, uh, uh, pro-business uh, government. How about infrastructure? Is it good for Cambodia? Can I ship my product? Can I trade across the border? Can I trade with the world? Do we have a good infrastructure? I would say that, you know, it's fairly good, fairly good. Since, uh, 90, uh, since 1998, we have been investing heavily in the infrastructure. First, within the country, to integrate Cambodia together, so you must build a road before to go to a few provinces of Cambodia, you had to go through Vietnam to enter Cambodian province because the road from Phnom Penh to that province cannot go. I mean, you can go, but take you probably two days, for example. But now you can travel 24-7 from Phnom Penh to all the provinces of Cambodia and between the province also on pay road. Some road always enlarged from two lanes to four lanes. We built our first expressway, it always open, expressway linking Phnom Penh, the capital city, to the deep sea port of Sin Oil on the BOT, $2 billion investment. We are currently building the second expressway between Phnom Penh to Ho Chi Minh City. We built to the border of Vietnam, and Vietnam will build from there to Ho Chi Minh City. That should be completed by 2027. The third expressway between Phnom Penh to Siem Reap, and then from Siem Reap to the border of Thailand, is going through the people study today. Okay, and we hope sometime next year we will we will have the ground breaking uh, for this uh, uh, third expressway. So the road network in Cambodia is fairly good that you can trade with Vietnam, with Thailand, with Laos, and all also internationally through our seaport deep sea port in Sinovil, or through our Phnom Penh port. Phnom Penh port is shipped through the Mekong River, uh, from Phnom Penh port on the Mekong River, and using the port uh, in Vietnam. Or Sinovil port that handles 60% of our trading volume. Now, we are going through the major expansion for Sinovil port. We have one billion US dollars to invest in three phases of the expansion. First phase, is a new container port with 14.5 meter depth that allows up to 93% of the vessel going through Asia, in Asia Pacific to be able to call on our port. As of today, only 18% because the draft only nine meters. But by 2026, 93% of the vessel that are going around Asia Pacific can call on our port. By 2028, uh, 2026, 93%. 2028, we have the new terminal with 16.5 meter depth, 
So that practically you can ship all over Asia Pacific. 2029, we will complete the third expansion of the new terminal with 17.5 meter depth. So then we can ship direct between Phnom Penh, between Cambodia, to the US, to EU, around the world, without going through transshipment, either in Vietnam, Singapore, Lam Chambang port in Thailand, or Hutchinson port in Hong Kong. So that's a major expansion for our uh, port. Our airport, Siem Reap, we opened last year, new airport, new airport outside of uh, uh, Siem Reap city. The reason we moved out, because the old airport was so close, around six kilometers uh, from Angkor Wat Temple. So the noise, vibration, the pollution uh, on, you know, on, uh, uh, on our temples is huge. So we decided, look, we cannot afford the vibrations and all that. So we move out also to, in, you know, to, uh, to build a new airport that can accommodate around 15 million uh, tourists per year. That was open last October. The new airport in Phnom Penh, also we can relocate after 60 years or something, we got to low relocate from Phnom Penh outside the Phnom Penh, and this airport can accommodate up to 50 million uh, tourists, uh, passengers, and that should be open sometime uh, next year, maybe the third quarter of next year. Now, we have one project that uh, we had a groundbreaking, you know, uh, presided over by our Prime Minister on August the 5th of this year, the project called Funan Daeju Canal. And this canal is to link Phnom Penh port directly to our seaport without going through uh, the port in Vietnam. Okay, so that uh, is the distance 180 kilometers. It will reduce the shipping route by 200 kilometers. So we're gonna save, we're gonna save CO2 emission to the environment. In addition to that, we are pushing to change from the land transport to inland waterway transport. So again, we will you know, reduce the CO2 emission. We will <clears throat> reduce the road accident if you ship you know, by, by road. You will reduce the damage to our roads. So by shipping all these uh, goods on the Mekong River directly to the sea, so you don't have to go through formality uh, at the border. Obviously, when you cross the border to another country, you must respect the rule regulation uh, of that country, the procedures, customs, and so, so on and so forth. So you know, you reduce the lead time, okay? That's, uh, that's important, that's important. And these projects uh, will not have the negative uh, impact on the environment, either in Cambodia or cross-border in Vietnam, because we study in so detail. I was Minister of Public Transport altogether on 11 years. I never study a project so detailed like the Funan Daichu Canal, because we want to ensure there's no impact in both countries. Cambodia will not implement a zero-sum game where Cambodia win, our neighboring country, namely Vietnam, loses. We cannot do that. And also we need to do, according to the Mekong River Commission agreement that four countries signed in 1995, namely Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, and Thailand. So we must abide by that agreement. So we had a groundbreaking on August the, uh, the 5th of this year, and this project likely to complete, and we have the goal to complete by 2028. So it's a game, game changer project for us to reduce the cost of logistic. So all investors, everyone will benefit. And along this canal, you will see <clears throat> logistic center, warehousing, commercial center, tourism center, and so on and so forth. When I talk about canal 180 kilometer, does that mean that Cambodia will dig 180 kilometer of canal? This canal was used 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago by the kingdom, the first kingdom of Cambodia called Kingdom Funan, okay, the, or Funan Kingdom. Kingdom, uh, kingdom of Funan <coughs> uh, dug three canals, 
One is Okao Canal, and our one went there. And the third one, one the what I'm talking about right now, the Funan Empire at the time, not Kingdom Empire of Funan. But the, the other two, the first two that I mentioned to you, if right now is part of Vietnam. It used to be Khmer territory, but right now part of Vietnam. So we don't have access to the sea from that canal dug by the Funan Empire. Funan Empire was very prosperous because of the trading using the Okay port, Okay canal. So this one, like I said, we just enlarge the existing canal. We're going to deepen the canal to allow up to 3,000 ton vessel to be able to, uh, uh, to travel between Phnom Penh and our sea. So that's all it is. We're going to dig probably seven kilometers because near uh, the sea is just zigzag, you know, very sm small canal. So that's all we're going to dig, you know, to straighten up a little bit uh, so that the ship can pass easily there around seven kilometers. This is about canal. Now, while you have good infrastructure, how about the cost of logistics? Well, today I can tell you the cost of logistics in Cambodia is a bit higher than our neighboring country. But what do you do in order to make logistics in Cambodia more competitive? We work with JICA, we work with World Bank to design the master plan. So we had a master plan on logistics for 2023, 2033, for 10 years, it's called for investment of 36.6 billion US dollars to implement 174 projects that are identified in the master plan. So we are here to urge American companies to look into the master plan to see which projects that they wish to participate in either on a BOT, Bill Operating Transfer, or public-private partnership for the logistics uh, uh, master plan. We work with a company in Singapore called VCH to build a first logistics complex in Phnom Penh, called Phnom Penh Logistics Complex, or VCH, call them a super port. They have one in Vietnam, uh, so they learn, you know, they're going to use uh, the best practices in Vietnam, super port in Vietnam, they're going to build one uh, near Phnom Penh. We are working with IFC of the World Bank to do the FS, the people's study, of a second one in Sinoville. It's going to be Sinoville Logistics Complex. So IFC is our advisor. They're doing this study today, and so I hope uh, maybe it's been almost two years now. They should finish uh, fairly soon, and then we're going to call for tender for the Sinoville Logistics Complex. So that the logistics. Well, you have all that. How about the labor force in Cambodia? Can you have enough labor force? I can tell you that you know labor force in Cambodia is young, dynamic willing to be trained, trainable. 60% is under the age of 35. So Kimura will have productive workforce the next 30 years, if you will. We are the youngest country in ASEAN. If we talk about General Z, we are talk about 60%. You know, the Philippines has 45, right, 4, 45%, but it be 60%. And they speak English. They speak English. In addition to that, the government of Kimura has a program to train up to 1.5 million youth from the poor families on technical vocational training program. We introduced this program November last year. Up until now, we already trained 57,000 Kimono youth. They don't have to pay for tuition, but we pay them a small amount, $80 a month to go to school to take this program and then they're ready to enter the workforce. So that's, that, that talk about the labor force in Cambodia. How about investment regime? If I invest in Cambodia, what kind of investment regime do we offer? Let me quote the World Bank. The World Bank said, and I quote, Cambodia has the most liberal investment regime in ASEAN, unquote. 
why the World Bank said that? Well, because in Cambodia, there's no alien business law. So all investors are treated equally. Every economic sector of Cambodia is open to investor. You can own 100% of your investment in Cambodia. I don't know how many countries in ASEAN that offer 100% banking license uh, to a foreigner. 100% telecom sector, agricultural sector. I don't know that many countries that allow, you know, you own 100%. You know, that, you know, this sector is very sensitive. Some country has movement trust law, you need to have a local partner. Some country has alien business law, we reserve the sector for the, the local, not in Cambodia. The only difference between a foreign investor and the local investors is the ability to buy land. Our constitution does not allow a foreigner to own land. But you can lease for 50 years. But also, you can do legally if a company is 51% owned by Cambodian, that entity can purchase land. Or you go through the trust fund that also you can acquire land. So, we have labor, we have land, the two factors of production. We need only the third one. The third factor of production is financial resources, right? The finance, funding. That's why we're looking for the investment from the private sector to complete the three factor of production uh, in Cambodia to create jobs for our people. Trade. Cambodia is very open. Like I said, we're part of ASEP. We also have the bilateral agreement, trade, uh, free trade agreement with China, with Korea, with UAE. UAE don't call free trade agreement, they call it uh, uh, SIPA, Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement with UAE. And we continue to discuss, to talk to other country, to, you know, to, to uh, sign the FTA. How about investment? Is my investment protected? Yes, the law on investment protect the investor. But in addition to that, Cambodia also signed the BIT, Bilateral Investment Treaty, with over 30 countries to protect their investment. So that all the ingredient, good ingredient in Cambodia, all we need to do is to work, uh, we, all we need is a cook. The cook from the USA to cook the food where we have uh, all the good ingredients. Uh, so that's why we're looking for the investment from the US. Now, we've been successful the last 12 months of the new government under the, the, uh, the Prime Minister, uh, the, uh, Prime Minister Hun, uh, Hun Manet. We approved 7.5 billion US dollars for the first 12 months of the new mandate. Uh, the seven mandate under the uh, Prime Minister Hun Manet. That's an increase of 160% compared with the 12 months of the same period under uh, former Prime Minister uh, uh, Hun Sen. In terms of number of projects, we increased 75%. In terms of employment, we create 344,000 jobs from this investment that we approve versus 200,000. See? So all this, it showed the confidence in the government of Cambodia. It's a place and also confident that they can be successful of their investment in the country, in the country. But at the same time, we like to diversify our portfolio of investor. All those are investment law does not discriminate against any investor from any country. They all treat equally at exactly the same uh, level playing field in Cambodia. Now, the 7.5 billion that I mentioned to you, 50% come from China. Around 30% is local Cambodian. We have the association of Oknya that's uh, here with us. Oknya Association is uh, the association of tycoon of Cambodia, and they invest in over, they have 400 members they invest over 800 companies in Cambodia. But we need to attract more FDI from EU and from the US. And that's why we make you know, this roadshow to attract 
the investment. So I urge the American company to consider Cambodia as a place uh, to invest. And a small, open economy with the mindset of the private sector. Because uh, we believe that private sector, once again, is the engine of our economic growth. I bring with me also the, the president of American Chamber of Commerce in Cambodia, uh, Casey Barnett, has his own business, doing uh, successfully, very successfully, uh, very successful in Cambodia. I also bring with me uh, the former uh, president of American Chamber of Commerce, uh, David uh, Bata, his investment of his own uh, over there, very successful in Cambodia, and also our uh, business community also uh, come along. So I'm going to stop here, pause right here, and probably some more time, time for you to ask a question. But here we are, a small open economy in the heart of the Great, great Mekong sub-region that can be a place uh, for the, the American company uh, to invest. Now, let me touch base a little bit. I, I'm sure some of you probably said, you know, why you all rely on China? Why China? Why China? Well, like I said, our investment law does not discriminate as long as they respect the law of the land. Submit application, then we review and we approve. There's companies also from China that want to de-risk, so they move to Cambodia, right? They willing to invest in infrastructure, in a power plant, hydro power plant, an expressway, and so on and so forth. Now, let's talk about green, clean energy. Cambodia grid, Cambodia power generation, majority 62% come from clean energy, from hydro, from solar. We the second largest after, in ASEAN after Laos in terms of clean energy, whereas the average ASEAN member states is around 30%. We have 62% already, and we'd like to move to 70% by 2030, by 2030. So clean energy in Cambodia, we committed to carbon neutral in 2050. We have our vision to become the high income country by 2050. We're going to graduate soon from the LDC, uh, least of all uh, our country, very soon, very soon. So we'd like to move to the high income country by 2050, but we cannot get there if we continue to rely on the low labor intensive industry. We like to move into the electrical, electronic, automotive industry, food processing industry, tourism, and so on, where we add more value, you know, create a job, a better paying job for our, uh, our people. We do not want to just saw or sell raw material. We need to process in our country in order to add the value. So that that what uh, I'd like to, you know, to, to share with you, uh, the audience are here and also the audience are online. And once again, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here for the second time and uh, to meet my uh, AU graduate. You know, so I asked him when he graduated, he said, 2000, what, great? Right? 2012. I said, wow, I must be very old. I graduated in 1978. <laughs> so... But it's great, you know, great that uh, we, we meet here. So once again, thanks so very much. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm here uh, to to answer any question that you might have. So thank you very much. Should I come here? Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, so for those in the room, we have a microphone over here if you would like to ask a question. And for those online, you have a little box. You can type it in and I'll be able to see it and, and read. Let me start um, with a couple of, of our own here. So uh, we have an election, you might have heard. It's the uh, middle of silly season here in Washington. Whoever takes over as President of the United States in January, uh, what would the Cambodian government like to see to enhance the kind of engagement that you highlighted in your, in your keynote? Well, we will work with any uh, president, uh, you know, any party. It can be Republican, can be President Donald Trump, uh, President Harris. Uh, for us, 
Well, what choice do you have? We have to work with them. So what we do, is just what we want, is just to ensure that there's more engagement, not less. We want more investment, not less. We want more dialogue, not less. So we want to be a good partner of the U.S. You know, U.S. is one of the oldest, oldest country, the oldest country that set up the diplomatic relationship with Cambodia. Next year, we celebrate the 75th anniversary of Cambodia-U.S. diplomatic relation. It's amazing. You, U.S. had a relationship with Cambodia in 1950, even before, three years before we gained our independence. So we are a good partner, a good friend of the U.S., and we like to engage more, we like to attract more FDI into the country. Today, we have companies like Coca-Cola, we have Ford, you know, we have uh, a part of Tiffany, Loretton, Cutting Diamond in Cambodia. We have uh, you know, a lot of fast food chains, we have Burger King, Carl Jr., Pizza Hut, uh, you name it, we have all in Cambodia. And Cambodians love American products, especially the young one. So I think, you know, the next administration should engage more with Cambodia and try to promote more trade and investment. Today, U.S. is the largest exporter market for Cambodia. We export to the trade volume between our two countries, around 9 billion U.S. dollars. So we like to do more. We like to attract more FDI for American company. So that's what we, you know, we hope that the next administration uh, will try to push American company to invest in Cambodia. Thank you. Uh, since 2019, a major irritant uh, between the U.S. And, and Cambodia, particularly on the security front, has been China's role in the expansion of Riem Naval Base. Mm -hmm. uh, how can Cambodia and the U.S. address that irritant in the next administration? Okay. First of all, our constitution does not allow any foreign military in Cambodia, period. So the Riem Naval Base is not for the Chinese. The Chinese provide us with the assistance to expand the Riem Naval Base for our own national defense, not to be used by the Chinese for all any military against another country. Our prime minister, former prime minister, our current prime minister, always said it, when this naval base is completed, any Navy can call on that port as long as for humanitarian, you know, disaster recovery and so on and so forth, or joint military exercise. That's it, not for any Chinese uh, military uh, force to base in Riem. Now, you ask us to prove something that's not going to happen in the future. How can I prove that? You know, first, they said, please have a high level of a government official to declare publicly that this naval base is not for China. And we did. Our former Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Defense, said publicly that he said, well, not good enough. We hire higher government official. So our former Prime Minister, Hun Sen, spoke publicly, televised live about two hours, talk about Riem Naval Base. Said, please believe us. Our constitution does not allow the Chinese or any military base of any country to be in Cambodia. Yeah, maybe it's not good enough again. During the special summit, US ASEAN special summit, which I had the honor to participate with our Prime Minister. I sat right behind him. President Biden was there. All the head of state, head of government of ASEAN was there also. Our Prime Minister again, one volunteer, Mr. President, he just want to reassure you that Riem Naval Base is not for the Chinese. What else can we do? Now, he said publicly in Cambodia, he said publicly in the U.S. ASEAN Special Summit here in Washington. 
So let's wait when it's completed, the real military ba uh, uh, naval base is completed, and the U.S. Navy said, look, I'd like to call on a port, you know, for humanitarian, for training. If you said no, we allow on the Chinese, then you tell them, you've been lying to us. Oh, we've been lying to our people because we go against our constitution. So wait until then, wait until it's completed, and ask to see whether we allow the U.S. Navy to call on the port, but make sure you bring the small one because the water is very shallow. You might get stuck there. People say, oh, you're going to have, you know, submarine, uh, the submarine. I'm telling you right now, the draft brought by three meters. Now we just dredge you probably six or seven meters. So bring a small one. You bring a big one, you get stuck there. I can tell you that. Thank you. All right, let's take our first audience question online. And, and those who are shy in the room, again, I encourage you to go over to, to the mic, uh, and I'll call on you there. Uh, this question comes from Alex Willemans from RFA. On Monday, independent Cambodian journalist Mek Dara was arrested for social media posts he made. Last year, the U.S. State Department awarded Dara an award for his reporting on cyber scam compounds in Cambodia. What message does his arrest send to the world? I'm sorry, I, I, you know, I'm here in the, in the U.S., so I have no knowledge uh, of the arrest. I just, uh, you know, heard yesterday from the, the gentleman from the Samson. So I have not even, uh, you know, to, uh, because, uh, called to Cambodia to find out about his arrest. So I cannot answer this question, to be honest with you. May I ask, would you like to address the broader issue of scam compounds, cyber scam compounds in Cambodia, which has been so much in the news? Well, yes, uh, that, I, uh, that I can say something about it because our government is aware of that. You know, the online scam or human trafficking that will, you know, uh, that affect the image of Cambodia, that affect the tourism industry of Cambodia. We do not condone or approve that. So we are fighting head on, very hard. Our private is a direct the Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Interior, to crack down on illegal online casino, gambl uh, illegal gambling, and try to crack down, not try, but work very hard to crack down on the online scam. It's affect us so bad, as much as affect the whole world. The image of Cambodia is not good. So to attract Tourism, tourists to Cambodia, or to attract FBI, people say, oh, I, I, I'm afraid to go, you know? So that we had to work very hard, and we are working hard to, I don't think that we can eliminate 100%, but at least minimize it to the max. So this kind of thing does not exist in our country. So that, that's what we're doing today. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, because it's also affect my work, really. When I go to promote investment, the people ask me about this same question. Oh, I don't dare to invest in Cambodia because of online scam, human trafficking. It's hurt us economically. So we will not allow this to continue. We're going to fight hard. Thank you. All right, the, uh, the line at the mic is building up. So let's take questions two at a time, if that's okay. And remember, two ground rules. One, please identify yourself for the DPM. And two, make sure the question is a question. Please. Thank you so much, Greg, and thank you so much, Excellency Sunjantal. I'm Mirat from Radio Free Asia in DC here. So my first question, I have two questions. My first question is, uh, since the start of the new government by the Prime Minister Hun Manat, uh, I was wondering what has Cambodian done to improve the climate, uh, investment climate and trade relation with the US, given the fact that uh, there are a lot of uh, major concern from US firm, not just uh, US firm, but also other foreign, uh, uh, foreign company uh, in the world, regarding the deep-rooted corruption issue in Cambodia, regarding the violation of labor laws, regarding the suppression against critics. As you may remember, uh, former Prime Minister Hun Sen lately disclosed that his government is going to uh, uh, create a new law to exclude those critics overseas uh, and consider them as a terrorist group. Uh, and also, while you are sitting here today, yesterday, your 
your government just arrested and cracked down on the uh, media, uh, foreign me uh, independent media, Majdara, as our colleague asked you already. So I was wondering how uh, all these things you could help to uh, will improve the uh, business climate or investment climate. My question number two is regarding the uh, latest sanction by the uh, US Treasury Department against one of your Ognya, Lee Yong Pat. So I was wondering because the Cambodian government already issued a statement saying that this may affect the, uh, uh, the improvement of the relation between the US and Cambodia. So how will you address this? Thank you so much, Excellency. Okay, and if we can hold the next set of questions. Uh, thank you, Deputy Prime Minister. My name is McCall Mincer, and I'm here from the Boeing Company. I'd like to ask you about Boeing. the Boeing Company. Boeing. Boeing. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask you about Cambodia's aviation uh, sector, which is experiencing significant growth, especially air travel demand. You mentioned improving airport infrastructure, so I'd like to ask you what else Cambodia is planning to, to do to meet this demand, and how American companies like Boeing can help. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so let me address uh, the first question from the VOA on the investment climate. What have we done? First, we had a new law, investment law, that provide a better incentives to the investor. Two, we increase the technical working group to 16 now to address the issues of the private sector. We offer a dialogue that never had before between American and Cambodia, between EU and Cambodia. In October, we offer this to Korea. So I will co-chair Cambodia, Korea, public, private sector dialogues that what we're doing. We're doing a lot of reforms. We put things online, like the CDC, we just launched about two weeks ago, the investment project management application, where you can submit the application for your investment online. You don't have to go to Cambodia, so a bit by paper. You can track every step of your application. So when you eliminate the physical interface between the private sector and the public sector, you can cut down on corruption issue. And I'm very pleased to tell you that two days ago, in my hotel room, 12, almost midnight, I approved three projects from here. They don't have to wait for me to return back to Cambodia. I you go through online, review everything online. One click, approve, it's done. So this is the kind of thing that we, we work on in order to make life easier for the investor or people to do business in Cambodia. The ease of doing business in Cambodia is improving. The cost of doing business in Cambodia is, is, is improving. Like I mentioned to you on logistics, the cost of electricity, the clean, green, uh, or energy, the special economic zone. We have 26 special economic zone where you put your investment in that zone. I would call it clean zone because have wastewater treatment plan, have communication, infrastructure. We send custom officials there, the people from Ministry of Commerce, labor, CDC, to locate it, to stay at a special economic zone in order to process all the requests for import and export out of that zone easier. Okay, that's what we've been doing in terms of improve the investment uh, climate. You talk about the, the, the rest like I mentioned to you, I, again, I just heard yesterday, I have not talked to any colleagues in Cambodia, but in general, in general, you see in Cambodia, the freedom of expression is a lot better than other countries in the region. I can assure you that. 
Some country you can say a little thing, you're going to be sued, you go to jail. But in Cambodia, you curse. You rather inform some outlet the role of the media, the role of a journalist is to inform, not to inflame. Remember that. The role is to inform, not to inflame. The role is to provide information actually. Radio Free Asia, two days ago, accused the government of Cambodia of removing, taking land from the people that live along the canal. 10,000 households will be displaced and been taken by the government of Cambodia. This kind of information that Radio Free Asia been broadcast into Cambodia. I do not know where you get your 10,000 numbers from. The exact numbers of households that will be uh, affected is 2,305. We did the count from the drone. We hired the third party to go to every houses that are affected. We have consultation with them. We have not taken one square inch of the land yet. So all this resettlement plan has been done by independent companies. The next step will be the team of the Ministry of Economy and Finance will go out there and verify what this private company did to ensure that we will, co that we will compensate our people properly at the market rate. We count a tree, banana tree, coconut tree, mango tree. All together, I can tell you, 149,163 trees. Mango tree, coconut tree, name it. We will pay them. We will compensate them. So we, we, we Free Asia, please, you don't have information, ask us. Don't put your finger in your mouth and win, blow strong, oh, 10,000. Not too strong, 5,000. The number of households affected. Ask us. We have nothing to hide. Go to Funan Daichu Canal website, Telegram, to get all information from there. We don't hide the information. Well, let, let, let me finish, okay? We don't have information. Wait, 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 wait. Let me finish. You can follow up with a question. That if that is true information, true information. Okay, go on website to see it. Okay, if you lack information, please come to us. Okay, so the role is to inform, not to inflame. All right. Now, regarding the sanction, that the price of matter is a private company. We have. We're not going to involve, get involved in that one. Okay, let them clear his own name on his own, on his own. The government of Cambodia will not stand there and defend and try to clear his name. He's his own obligation to, to defend himself. You know, I mean, he's, he has the right to defend himself. And we see what outcome from that. Okay? Okay, you, may I? He, he raised his hand twice, so may I? Your schedule is busy with mine Please, today. I allow you to, 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 to come back, to, you know. Please go to the mic. Yeah. Thank you so much, Excellency, for your response to my question. Uh, I just to uh, ask you, because you said that before we write anything or publish anything, we have to ask first the government official. But how can we... Uh, ask government official if the Cambodian government official and most of all, almost all of the spokesperson from the, uh, the new government especially, I can say that uh, they don't want to talk to us, they dub us as the uh, critics or somehow join the so-called uh, color revolution, something like that, from by, uh, baked by foreign uh, government. So how, come, how can we uh, uh, raise the question to the government and how can we get the answer if you consider us and you kick us out, uh, Radio Free Asia and other independent media from Cambodia. And if the uh, press, uh, uh, press uh, environment in Cambodia still uh, become like uh, a hostile for government of Cambodia. Thank you. Look, uh, you need to look yourself in the mirror, my friend. You've been telling wrong information all along for the last 10 years. We tell A, you say B. 
How can we trust you? You had the last word, no matter what we say. You never reported what we say. And that's why we don't want to answer your question. That, that's the reason. But let's turn the page. Now I'm telling you, I want you to go back report on Funan Daichu Canal. You said, look, I made a mistake, not 10,000, 2,305 houses that will be affected by this project. Please go back and correct your statement. And let's see whether we can work with you or not. But if I continue to give you accurate information, you keep on rejecting it, you put any, num any numbers that you want to broadcast, you want to inflame, you want to exaggerate, you want to be, play the role of the opposition, look, you need to be independent. If you're independent, ask me a question, okay? You send me information that, look, tell me about Canal Project, I will answer you, okay? I will not shy away, but please make sure what I say, information I give to you, you broadcast that. You can double check and then you can broadcast the information. But if I say 2,305, you said 10,000. I don't know what else to say. So next time you ask me questions, well, no need to talk to IFA because they will not broadcast the true and accurate information. So the journalists, one more time, you know, media, the role is to inform accurately, not to inflame. Remember that word, okay? To inform, not to inflame. I hope you answered the question. And let's turn the page. Come back, come to me, if you have a question. Come to my colleagues, they're all here. Secretary of State for Ministry of Mine Energy, Secretary of State for Ministry of Commerce, ask a question. Be more than happy to answer. But please, please write the accurate information. That's all we ask you for. I told my colleague, you know, I had an interview in, in Canada. Interview. They taped my voice. I put my tape recorder on also next to each other. said, look, you tape me, I tape you. Don't misquote me. So when you call me, ask for the information, I guarantee you I will tape you also. Just in case you say something that I didn't say. I want to tell you ahead of time, okay? I have a call. I put tape recorder, I also tape your voice, okay? To let you know ahead of time. I had to defend myself because you have been doing this for the last 20 years. All we broadcast have been wrong, incorrect. <laughs> so that's why it got us a little upset, a little upset, okay? But let's turn the page. Thank you. Boeing, tourism industry is big, ma'am, very big. A lot of airlines. Yeah, we just said uh, Air Asia, Cambodia, uh, Encore Air has been expanding, uh, Cambodia's uh, uh, airways. So eventually, we need a lot of planes from Boeing. We need engine from GE, from Pratt & Whitney, for example. There's American companies, right? So I used to work with GE, so I route for GE engine. You know? So I'm very pleased to see 737 that using all CFM engine. Very happy with that. Okay, very happy with that. So please work with our civil aviation if you have any issues and things like that. We can introduce you to the airline, uh, the Air Asia and the uh, Onco Air, what not in the country. Because uh, eventually the tourists will come back. Today, we have not reached the level of pre-COVID yet. We used to have six, over six million tourists but now around three plus four, maybe million. So we'd like to reach that level. And with the new airport, we hope to receive more tourists and also cargo, that's all need. You know, we, uh, we always talk to the private sector, they need to have a good cargo terminal at the new airport so they can ship faster, you know, the, uh, by, by air. So we welcome Boeing, welcome Boeing, you know, to, uh, to, uh, to discuss with the airlines in Cambodia and also with the civil aviation uh, in Cambodia. Let us know when you come to Cambodia, we you know, put you in touch with the civil aviation. Is that is okay, ma'am? Is that answer your question? You know, I'm, I'm happy with Boeing, you know, because of the, the former two chairman and CEO of Boeing or HGE, and I know both of them. The last one, Dave Calhoun, before that, uh, uh, Jim McNerney, I know both of them. 
So I'm pro Boeing. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, we are eight minutes over time, and I apologize to my colleagues who have been staying at the mic, but we do have to gavel this closed. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, first thank my colleagues, Lauren Mayo, who helped organize this, Jack Mint, not resident with our team, who helped pull it together, and the whole uh, South Asia and, and Avian Broadcasting team. Please join me in thanking the Deputy Prime Minister for his time this morning. Thank you. Thank you.